This is a uh, do-it-yourself uh, test for the presence of garlic bloat nematode or stem and bulb nematode. In the UK, they call it uh, onion eelworm in uh, your seed garlic or in garlic that you're going to use from seed from someone else. It's a big problem right now in the in the U.S. and uh, most people say you need a university lab test, but you can do it at home. Here's how. We're going to get the slices pretty thin. I use a razor blade. Put them on a glass slide, piece of glass. And you need some chlorine-free water. I'm assuming tap water might kill them. I'm not sure about that. Just put a couple drops right on them and soak them good with the water. These uh, slices. And uh, I've also had pretty good luck adding a bit of hydrogen peroxide. I don't know whether that's because it oxygenates the water or whether it maybe helps um, break up the cells. Add a couple drops. I've tried it several different ways. And I've let it fizz up for about 10, 20, or 30 minutes before I bother to take it to my smartphone to get a closer look. Here's my setup for the smartphone. That's a black ceramic coffee mug upside down on a flashlight. It's about three inches beneath the lens of my smartphone, which is just sitting on a shelf there aimed downward. Um, and there is a fluorescent light behind everything that kind of lights things up. There's, it gives you a better idea about how far away it needs to be. This is an iPhone 5, by the way. This is uh, movie footage from the view of the iPhone. It's not zoomed in yet of the slide. Um, it, uh, the light in this case is below. You just use the touch screen to zoom in. And um, then you want to move things around so you're looking at a dark part of the frame. And then you uh, basically you press on the touch screen, hold it down, and it locks in on that focus and on that exposure. And this is what you can see with the garlic slab still on the uh, slide. Um, in person, you could make out that one worm, that one eelworm swimming. And then on the computer, you can see there's a few more of them around. But they're a, a little hard to see. A lot of them are actually hiding on the margin between the garlic slabs and the glass. They're... Uh, they seem to be hugging that spot where there's an extra thick film of water. Um, but as long as you have the exposure set for the dark part and you're overexposing the garlic slabs, then that should call up anything. If it's swimming, then it's a positive test for nematode. If it's just a fiber, it's not moving, it could be any number of things on your, on your glass. It's probably should keep looking. Now, I've taken the uh, garlic slabs off, and um, we're going to zoom in again here and see what's available. That seems to um, really show a lot more of them. I think that the majority of them were hiding right underneath the sliver of garlic. I don't know why. Possibly there's more energy there, more food to, uh, to, to consume. Um, but again, this is, uh, you don't need a microscope to find these things. If they're in your garlic at any significant numbers, then just one slice, two slices on a glass slide, um, with the right lighting and a smartphone with a zoomable camera, you can just find them yourself. And basically that means that the entire patch that this garlic came out of is going to be very suspect for uh, being invested with garlic bloat nematode. And it's, you know, going to cause you problems if you use it as seed. It's not an issue for eating the garlic. Okay, now we're sliding over to a follow-up test if your first check didn't work out too hot for uh, being a slam dunk positive. It's called a Behrman Funnel. It's been around since like 1917. And this is how the university labs would do a test only. They would have 
the higher tech equipment. Chopping up the garlic, putting it in a blender with some distilled or chlorine free water. And you want to chop it, you know, uh, you don't want to puree it, you just want to chop it. And I don't really know how far. This is the key part of it here is you got a sieve that sits on top of a bowl. You're going to dump the blender contents into the sieve. If you need a little bit more liquid, add some more water. And so basically it's soaking and then there's about an inch of clearance below. I've also added a little hydrogen peroxide to get them moving. Phones up a little bit, can make a mess. Uh, it's kind of what it might look like. And now basically you're going to take, wait about 10, 20, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. You're going in with a plunger of some kind and you're sucking the liquid from the bottom of the bowl. Um, and then, uh, so that's where the worms wind up is at the bottom. And you prop up your suction device so that the, the thing is, uh, the opening's at the bottom and it helps the worms sink more. Put it on a glass slide, a drop at a time. You can do this over and over and over again. Without a microscope, um, basically you're back to the same setup here. Zooming in on the water droplets. And again, the lighting really helps. Um, this is a video, and you can see them moving there. The droplets stand up really good. In this case, I'm not using a black ceramic coffee mug for the backdrop, but more just black construction paper. Um, I don't really know what the magnification is on a, an iPhone 5, but it's the zoom is not an optical zoom. It's a uh, just a, a digital uh, crop zoom type thing. Um, but if you need to move, move take some movies and then move uh, the movies to your um, computer, that'll help you see. And then I turned out the lights and tried it with a flashlight from the other direction just to see if that would work. And uh, if you don't have under-counter fluorescent lights like I have, then this would also be a way of uh, uh, lighting up the bubbles and seeing what you can see. Now we're sliding over to um, taking a look at these eel worms using a microscope, which I happen to have borrowed from a brother of mine. Um, most of the stuff uh, that's out there on the internet, the uh, official wisdom is that you need a lab test to be sure. Well, if you got a microscope, it's a slam dunk situation here. You won't have any trouble seeing these at all. This is the lowest power setting. Some hydrogen peroxide bubbles a little bit uh, closer up. This is all, these uh, movies were shot um, through the eyepiece of the microscope. These shots here are of ones that I put in the freezer and then thawed out. They might have killed them, might not. It's hard to say. Also, you can see some larva or eggs there, younger generations of the worms. There's two different samples, one in a figure eight that's actually alive, and the other like a pill shape that's in a younger uh, larval stage. They're right in there, right in the garlic with that with the uh, older, uh, the older juveniles, I guess. So it was fun and boy, phenomenal, just phenomenal how many of these things are living right in your garlic.